Hey there, and welcome to the ADK channel. I, of course, am Dave, and of course, with me, as always, is Kirk. And we have the wonderful guys, Adam, Ben, and Danny from Tribe of Ghosts. Welcome to the channel. Hello. Hello, Hello. guys. Hello. Thanks for having us. <laughs> you are more than welcome. Uh, we had obviously had the opportunity to see you guys uh, live on just Friday, just gone. It's, it already feels like a mile, like about a week or two or what ago. It's just so much has happened in the last few days, but it's. Uh, you played, played an absolute blinding set, and at the end of this video, we'll actually be having, uh, there'll be a live track and a live performance summary by Andy and Kirk from the channel. Um, but we're getting some deep and dark questions with you guys. Uh, I'm going to do the simple ones, which is a nice, open and easy question, which is, so the band has been officially formed in 2018. Uh, you've obviously had some changes in sort of 2020, 2022. There's some significant sort of stylization changes. But could you just take us through how the band initially came, kind of came together? And really, for me, as I love to know, it is name of the band, Tribe of Ghosts. Where does that come from? What does it actually mean? Over to you guys. So the name, Tribe of Ghosts, uh, I'm not going to lie, is just a phrase that came in my brain and just filled me brain for a little while. So it just got stuck in my head. I was like, right, cool, that's a name. <laughs> Slam that. Right, OK. Um, yeah, the band. So the band did start in 2018. Um, we've had a few, you know, we had big old lineup change, but we've we really relaunched the whole thing and um, did a massive, well, basically we, we all came together as us four. So sadly, Becky uh, is feeling unwell, so she's not with us today. Um, us four, we got, we came together at the end of December, 2021, wasn't it boys? 21? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically kind of the idea was either we find a, find another guitarist after our last, after the last one left, or we completely do something new. And we'd always been wanting to play with industrial textures and synthesizers and, and that kind of stuff. And Becky wanted to really, really delve harder into bringing some, some of the more pop elements that she loves. Uh, Danny had been playing with a click track with, uh, with himself, so with a borrowing with other bands and that kind of stuff. And it kind of opened up to all of us going, could we do something with that and, and what would that be mm. um what that ended up being was me filling an entire filling <laughs> at least how <laughs> many lunatic songs filled of ridiculous synthesizers electronics and, <laughs> and absolute filth that it ends up with me going to the rest to, to dan <laughs> to danny ben and becky just going so i've done this <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's where it is. <laughs> that's, that's basically how we started. So we all came together, pulled, uh, at, we all came together after we made this decision and entirely rebranded, remade, and relaunched the entire band. It, for us, 20, 2020, like 2022, last year is is when we started. So, yeah. Yeah, can I, can I come in on that then? Yeah, yeah of it, course. It, even the way that you've described it, it's like a year zero moment, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You have this EP that comes out in 2019. And then, as you just said there, in December 2021, you've completely retooled your sound. Very ambitious, I must say, as well. So, so my first question when I listen to the two singles, which for our listeners, absolutely go out there and download and stream them. So it's Cold, which you released, released in March 2022, <laughs> and the song Rain. Um, which you released in, in June 2022. What came first? Was it the challenge of writing music based on the themes covered in the classic dystopian novels of the 20th century? Or was it the desire to combine extreme metal with these dark pop elements? All of it, honestly, all of it together at the same time. I'd always, I am massively influenced by these kind of, I'm massively influenced by dystopian fiction and, and dystopian kind of uh well dystopian vision dystopian ideals future futurism and, and and that kind of stuff so cyberpunk elements and brutalism those kind of things really uh inspire me in terms of in in terms of those kind of moments and it was more danny basically throwing out the idea of bringing in the click track and actually going whole hog with this that gave me the musical inspiration to kind of go well what do you three want me to do? 
I think, yeah. Um, I know I'm I know I'm speaking for the boys a lot, so I do apologize kind <laughs> like, jump in, you two, like at any time, jump in. <laughs> Yeah, it's the, see, the thing is, that what you'll see when we edit this video... Uh, oh, sorry, Ben, I think you're on mute if you, if you want to say something. Um, what, I've, I have, it's so rare that you're here, especially in, ext in heavy music, especially with the dynamics you're using, to have mid-90s Björk, Portishead, and then mm. you've got Neurosis and, you know, that German post-metal band, The Ocean. Mm. It's mm. like there's elements of that in there as well, and the production is sensational i can tell you put so much time into that um but what, what are some of the labels you've heard from other people when they're describing your new sound and because it's so hard to put a <laughs> label on it which clearly means it's successful but what have you heard other people describe it as your music or the, the last two singles uh danny <laughs> ben what do you two think um... oh, i think da i think danny's frozen <laughs> it's just very deep in thought. I don't know, just chaotic. Can you hear me? Sure, really? Yeah, I can hear there you now. Anyway. Yeah, Ben's got, yeah, Ben's now in one like chaotic. Yeah, it's the the thing is though, like you know when when you watch your live, it is like you you're seeing these professional studio musicians turn up. You've all got your earpieces in, and I really didn't know what to expect. And I think that's what blew me away. And, and when I've gone back and listened to the singles, the latest one you did, Rain, as in Rain in Blood by Slayer, just to be clear, for the for the listeners and the viewers, there's some techniques in that that are incredible, especially the vocals. She's doing that Mariah Carey. Is it like the whistle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. whistle tone. Whistle, whistle tone. Tie. Wow, I've never, I've, I've just, I've never really heard that in in heavy music before. She's so sort how of. Did that come about? She sort of just threw that in there, didn't she? Like, cause yeah. I'd never heard her really do that. All of a sudden, like, where, was it around the time that we asked her to, to join? Yeah. Or was it something that, that she started doing live or something? And all of a sudden it was just like, what the, what is that? It like, was, it was, it was as big we a surprise demo. to us as it, as it was to everyone that hears it. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, this is just insane. Yeah, was it a real, I mean, you can imagine that, can't you? First time you hear it. Is it a shiver down the spine moment? It's like, wow, we've got a musician who can do that in our band. <laughs> it's it, genuinely, yeah. Like Becky, Becky is an absolute powerhouse of vocalists. Bonkers. It's like, I guess, like we haven't ever really heard that up close before because none mm -hmm. of us are, are in the in the pop world as much as Becky is. So, because uh, it's quite rife there. But in, it, you don't get whistle whistle tone in metal that, all that often. <laughs> so, I think that's why we sort of latched onto it. We were like, "That's really cool." Yeah, that's great. Did she? Do you know, like you said, that she wanted to bring pop elements in? Mm. To me, I'm I'm hearing dark pop music, as I said, Porter said, Bjork, PJ Harvey, even you know, in the vocals, probably some Tori Amos. What did she say to you? Did she say like, "I want it to sound like"? So did she just turn up and do it? And you're like, "Okay, we don't really know what that is." So essentially, we Becky and I've kind of written the we write a lot. I've written a lot of the lyrics, and Becky and I work on the vocals together and do the top line stuff. So we're we're it's more of because when it comes down to our influences, it's even our influences aren't very much like yeah no we we rigidly stick to this like one of our. Uh, Becky's been absolutely hammering like Boy Thought by Dane at the moment. So she's just been like, yeah, this is like <laughs> absolutely dis disgusting pop music. We've got like, uh, what what do we have in the car? We've got like, we've got our, our playlist, which is just like mid noughties, early nineties, R&B, like bangers just to get us all hyped up. Like <laughs> it's like, we've got Charlie XCX or that kind of stuff. So we're pulling in like, it's not even like dark pop. It's literally full on hyper pop like we're bringing it like she we, we all write like when, when when becky and i are when i'm kind of writing this stuff and in in danny's words <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a recent thing was uh ben danny and becky pull what they want into my head and just leave me to it <laughs> <laughs> we're basically like every now and again we'll just sort of call him up and be like oh i've had an idea like what I was listening to such and such a song and I was like, that idea would be really cool. Why don't we try and put something like that in? And he goes, oh, okay. And then like maybe a week later, maybe a few 
months later, your your idea will pop up and you'll be like, oh, there it is. And you're like, oh, sweet, cool. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, that, that, let's not get away from it though. This is still obviously emotionally very heavy, but oh, yeah. as well, isn't it? There, there are definitely some really brutal moments like that, that riff that you're playing at the end of Rain, you know, with that like discordant code, it's almost like Gillinger escape plan when they oh, still things that yeah, absolutely yeah. brutal. And again, it's the, oh, thank you. I think it's the paradox, isn't it? Because you have mm. this introspective verse where with this beautiful brooding voice and some really mm. anxious, not even melody in the background, atmospherics. Mm. And then it will just go into that. And when I saw that live, me and Andy, we were like, that's where we had there. It's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's it's chaos. Everything, uh, we've all kind of come to the same conclusion that what we want to write and what we want to play and what we want to put forward is beautiful chaos. So if we can, if we can keep those, if we can have the melody still be there, but make it as frantic and chaotic as physically possible then it's then we want it there that's absolutely what we want it's just it's, i for me it's just sort of we're taking little bits of all the different aspects of music that give it give you that little sort of tingle in in your spine that's like oh that's really cool but normally where you're if you're like pigeonholed into a certain genre like thrash metal or you know stone of doom or whatever you can't really explore that as much whereas we're just sort of going oh let's just try it and see what happens and yeah so far it's sort of been working <laughs> yeah, it's, it is it's literally a, a throw it at the wall and see what sticks kind of angle <laughs> it's like yeah there's no high art there's no high art behind it no, <laughs> it's, just, sort of, just winging it <laughs> but the songs you know, it reminds me of um even though i don't think you sound like this band but you can you do remind me of Spirit Box in some way because the way they did it over the last four years, they just they had three years of releasing singles, mm. built up their fan base, and then everyone demanded an album. And they're bringing in some certainly pop elements and mm. art rock and even shoegaze and, and even you know minimalist electronica. Mm. And then they've got these really heavy Meshuggah periphery type riffs in there as well. Spirit Box are, in, are absolutely we've had quite a few comparisons with spirit box and, and at no fault are we going to be sitting there looking at listening to that and go well yeah we're not really so no we fucking love spirit box we go, we're all we're all having a band holiday to go see spirit box when they play in london we're all bloody excited oh, i might i might see you at that game oh I'll, hell yeah uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get you a drink at the bar but yeah, yeah. The, the reason so it leads on to my next question how do you see the band evolving in terms of are you going to go for two years more of singles are you going to put an ep out an album is there a so we've got some bits in the works don't really want to be talking about it just yet but we have got bits in the works there's there's a lot of stuff that there's a lot of stuff singing in the background um a lot of the tracks that we're playing live are from uh are from a larger body of work though it's coming our next single is gonna be out it is gonna be out very soon like very very soon um which I think is actually the video you guys captured. I think it's the one you're dropping. So that's our next video, uh, which is absolutely, which is awesome. Very excited to see what we think of that. And um, we've got, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff we've got in the works at the moment that we're that we're practicing and working. So that's that, it's all very exciting, like ah, kind of things. <laughs> so would it make sense to shop around? If, I mean, have you been approached by any record labels? uh again you can't really say can you <laughs> yeah don't really don't really want to don't really want to be going like no not really or yeah we have it's don't really, don't don't exactly want to jump into it but yeah because we always ask this of our of, of certainly artists that are up and coming there's always that trade-off you sign a deal you're potentially giving giving up your publishing rights ownership of the master tapes and you know, you're just not going to make anything really. It's going to be very difficult. Whereas if you stay in, in you know, the self-sufficient route, artists always tell us it's good doing that, but you have to rely on merch sales and it's very hard to get booked on any festivals because mm -hmm. the organizers are going to be saying, do you have a label behind you? No, you don't. Well, if you don't sell enough tickets, who's going to back you up? So <clears throat> have you had, have you at least had any of those conversations? You're thinking what is right for the band? Or are you just like, hey, let's yeah. Just yeah, we've, we've definitely had those kind of conversations. And 
we've got aspirations. We've absolutely got a lot of aspirations that we'll be, that we'll be kind of going forward with. Um, label stuff is, for us is, is something that we, we would love, like we would adore. Uh, we've got a few things that we're looking into in the background. So there's, again, it's really, it sounds like a big, really cryptic, but it's like there's, there's, there's some bits we're working on. Let's, let's just say that there's some bits that we're working on. And we don't yeah. want to say too much in case it doesn't get fruition or, or if it does, and then we've sort of like spoken too soon or anything like that. You know. there's, yeah, there's we're just trying there. to consider yeah. what's the best move, I suppose. So yeah. best not to jump into anything. See what's out there. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be posting things on Facebook saying big news coming, aren't you? That's what's gonna. You're just oh, doing the build up. The build up's coming. Yes, definitely <laughs> not. No, <laughs> it'll be big things coming. Where you uh, big things coming? What are you doing? We're playing in Danny's front room. <laughs> yeah, yeah let, let's quote Danny on this. You're winging it. There's no high art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but then, then, uh, and then just, I, just, just, just personally, yeah, you know. oh, they're, oh, they're, they're high art. There's, there's, there's a lot of, it, it, yeah. It's, it's one of, it's one of those ones where it's like, as I've been, as as I've been writing stuff and showing it to the guys and saying, like, what do you think? Where's, does this feel right? Does that feel right? It's all been, for us, it's what what we what makes us laugh, what makes us what gives us joy, what, like what's really fun to play, what's really fun to, to listen to, what what gives us the feeling, those tingles that we want. Like uh, the end of the new single, um, when Becky and I were, doing, were just about to start vocals, Becky had an idea of how she heard the track ending. Um, so I'd written a lot of it. She asked her, she was like, can we do something else different with it? Gave it a try. And then it ended with the, with the literally the finale that we're playing now and when it came to that it just ended up with me and her just listening to it back in the speaker and saying like yeah no that's right yeah that's really good it was me and her just sitting in my bed just giggling the whole time <laughs> she's going this is so dumb <laughs> but live it sounds like it sounds like the most disgustingly terrifying thing possible we've like we've had people showing it to people and they've got like oh my god that's horrifying and then we just go. We were just giggling. We thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Um, do you know, like when I when I listen to that when you relaunch and that single you did, Cold, mm. Danny, there's there's like a moment in that song where you've just gone full on drum <laughs> workshop, and uh, you just like the rolls are everywhere. I was like, whoa, because I yeah, thought it was just going to be like little... you know industrial trip art type beats, and then you fucking absolutely lose it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was just my little uh, my little moment in the spotlight of the set, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, just having just having fun with it. So just just another question that definitely intrigued me and Deb. What what is the background to this band? Because you do sound like you're quite advanced musicians. It clearly can't be your first musical project, this. So Danny and I uh, were in King Leviathan back in the day. Uh, of which we found still many of those stickers around Club 85 on, on Friday. So we're like, oh, bloody hell, they're still there. Um, we, you know, we've played in Europe. We played in, uh, we played Bloodstock twice. We did, we've toured around the UK, that kind of stuff. Fair amount of wacky stuff there. Danny uh, is the beautiful, beautiful man behind the sticks and the sire. So he is smashing the absolute shit out of it at the moment with those boys. They're doing amazing. Um, ben is a wonderful function double bass player and also played in um, Fry's Lantern, so did post rock kind of stuff in that as well. And Becky has done backing vocals for uh, a couple of pop artists uh, on the underground scene and also is in a duo op trio called uh, Blaker and the Bombshells. for Harmon is there. Danny, I didn't realize yeah. you were the drummer in Isaiah. We're we talking about the Sunderland Deathcore band. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's yeah, me. They are like the heaviest band in Britain. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> so, did you? Were you obviously you weren't an original member, were you? Because are, are, are you from Wearside, Sunderland? No, no, I'm, I'm oh. from Brighton, born and born and bred. <laughs> but yeah. basically, I got I got asked to uh, fill in for a tour for them last March um, around Europe. Really last minute, um, we sort of muddled our way through the first couple of shows and then. Um, but we all, we all got on like super well from the start. So it was, I was sort of like, 
yeah, fuck it. Yeah, if you guys are looking for a, because they just booted their old drummer. Um, and they asked me if I, you know, I, I was like, do you guys want a full-time drummer? And they're like, yeah. So yeah. that's how that sort of came about. That last yeah. album, I ended up, so I, I'm the lead editor for a publication called Screen Blast Repeat. And I yeah. remember reviewing that album. I ended up giving it a six out of 10. It's one of the few times like, this is just too heavy. You know, we pride <laughs> ourselves on review next year, man. This is just too heavy. There have been eight songs, but like, yeah, nine out of 10. Those last four, I was like, wow, this is traumatic. I just, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to press stop. Um, yeah. But man, if you're, if, if that, if your band is even 50 intense live as you are on record, Jesus, I feel, so, you know, I really do feel for the safety of anyone in that crowd. Oh, they're lovely boys. They're lovely, lovely boys. Oh, they're lovely guys. Can I ask a question about the, uh, just for yourself, Adam, with your previous bands, have you, have you ever been, just the main vocalist in any of the previous bands? Yeah, King Leviathan, I was the King Leviathan, I was the lead vocalist. I did lead vocals in I Master when I was doing that as a little project. Uh, um, makes a lot more sense. Okay, that made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was I've, in, never, I was... I've never seen a backing vocalist or a secondary lead vocalist with the set of pipes that you've got. And I'm sitting there at the back on filming going, damn, this boy can sing. What the <laughs> hell? I, yeah. No, I actually that's... was at points I was listening to going, at certain points, your vocal inflections, you're going, that sounds like Mark Tremonti on vocals. Damn, that's Fucking a good voice. Thank you, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was well impressed, but especially when I was listening back doing the video edit, I'm like, yeah, that sounds like Mark Tremonti there. Damn. I'm cool. absolutely not a guitar player like Mark Tremonti, I'll tell you that for certain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think many people are, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've got a real chemistry live as well. It's almost like a duet. Um, so, yeah. right, this probably won't make sense to you. Whenever I listen to that Pet Shop Boys song, What Have I Done to Deserve This with Dusty Springfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're Neil Tennant and she's Dusty Springfield. And we're talking about the song Rain here, which yeah, is a very yeah. heavy song. I just got those vibes like you were enjoying it so much. Taking on, because do you know in that song, in the, in, I don't even know if you call it the middle eight, she's singing this verse and then you come in and do it in yeah. your vocals, don't you? The same lyrics. So that's to me. On record and live, you two are enjoying that. I can really oh, yeah. do that. Absolutely love it. Like they're both in, like we cheer each other on. Like Becky and I spent half the time basically, basically just like hyping each other up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear this finale and the new single then. Ah, uh, it's so good. It's yeah. the, well, the, the finale on the new single uh, actually has a guest focus. Oh, okay. So I'm doing. I do the rest of the track, but in the end section, it's. Uh, Becky with a lovely little guest vocalist who, <laughs> who has done looking. something who live I can, live I'm doing a good imitation on record Jesus Christ it's disgusting <laughs> it's the, it's 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 to the point where uh, we when I, I actually had to message them going okay I can't like how do you do that because I can't do that how how <laughs> do you how do you do because that's disgusting and it's just like <laughs> so yeah that was that was very fun i'm wondering if you've got will ramos in from lorna show no no no, no, no. <laughs> we, 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 i think danny that tries a lot of money now wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. that would be <laughs> that would be epic yeah but no, it's not it's not will ramos. it's not <laughs> so uh yeah i'm gonna hand it back over to you then dave you want to wrap up? Um, I just had one last question. That would be before we, before we fire we, it we over. Have, we have some more. Oh, oh, oh Danny, Danny's. Oh, we had a delay there, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. 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 broken. What are we going to What are we going to say about Will Ramos, Bobby? Oh, I was just saying that we um we've got someone just as good yeah. on it. Uh, okay. It's out of film, and all of us are so excited. <laughs> like he's so <laughs> fucking cold. So, we'll so look forward now. to that. Uh, yeah, so the last question I have before we go and check you guys out live with the, and then with the summary from Kirk and uh, Andy is obviously I, I watch a lot of bands at Club 85 due to the fact that we do a lot of filming out there. We do the Metal to the Masses tournaments uh, or Battle to the Bands, whatever you want to call it, uh, and obviously capture all the, the, the tracks and bands throughout the whole year. And one of the, my biggest bugbears of watching bands is uh, Stagecraft. And one of the things I was so surprised when I watched Tri uh, Tribe of Ghosts was the quality of your stagecraft, oh, the work that's been put into it. Because uh, one of the things I, I criticize or pick bands up for and give feedback on is 
their lack of connection with the audience. They don't look at the audience. They look at each other. They look at their guitar strings. They look at the floor. They look at the ceiling. But they don't like to look at people. And they don't want to connect with the audience. And the one thing I watched with you guys was there was that constant connection. Is this something that when you are rehearsing that you actually put time into it? Or is this just something that you've over the years of being in bands? It's just become something that you've naturally worked through and you it's just become natural for you and second nature. I think it's a combination of it. What I would say is it's it's natural, but also it's something that I'd definitely say in, in this band has become a real a real catalyst so in previous in, in like in Danny and I's previous bands uh, we had like some theatrics we had a load of theatrics going on um, we had uh, by the end of it all though we had like no lights anywhere all the lights in the venue turned off three lights for the room smoke make it as loud as physically possible and I'm calling everyone like an asshole which is not fun uh, <laughs> but I yeah I was not in a good place mentally but in this band in Tribe when we first started off there was we we had that chemistry to begin with uh last year like when we first when we did our first gig back we, we had that chemistry going for it but it was it, it was very much a learning curve of us being used to playing with each other live on stage nowadays so, but but that over i, I want to say up to about Bloodstock, we started getting used to playing with each other live in this format and get used to get getting used to that to the point where now it's second nature. Mm. And for us being able to give, I think a, a big mantra that we've all got is if there are people that aren't having fun, we're not having fun. And I think that's really been a, that's really been a big thing for us. Like let's. Like we get if we're gonna do this, this is all about having fun. So as much as the songs are disgusting and you know brutal, but they, they, you know we we want to enjoy it. And I, I think that kind of comes across. Yeah, thank you. A lot of our time we spend trying to contain it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the hilarity of uh, the hilarity of the contain thing of, on Friday, eight hours beforehand, the guitar that I was playing. I had only just bought. <laughs> okay. So I'm, and I'm throwing that thing around like it, like it's just like, yeah, nah, it's fine. <laughs> Carrying it above my head like I'm trying to get a bunch of animals in the African savanna to start yelling oh. something about circles at it. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Well, I just want to say a big thank you to all three of you, Adam, Ben, absolute and pleasure. Danny, uh, for joining us this evening. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have a chat with you. Uh, and of course, for everyone at home, we're now going to go and check out the new track by Tribe of Ghosts live from Club 85 from last Friday. And of course, we'll finish that up with a little bit of feedback from Kirk and Andy, probably drunk on the night, giving their uh, feedback with a guest appearance from Mr. Nick Plews as well. So thank you, Adam. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, Danny. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Guys. Let's go check them out live. Take care.
That was quite original. Off, off that band I go way back with the Gar stage. Yes. So Adam Did, and Danny. What, you actually were in the band with No, so um, they were in King of Life. Yes. Um, Danny and Adam and uh, Aghast and King of Life. I was a duo. We used to look together. Hey man, they were fucking and, uh, Danny awesome. Danny and Adam, that's why I gave Adam a shot of Jägermeister during that exactly. gig. Yeah. Which I believe is what made the gig so good. Because hey. without it, we'd be shit. Are you recording? <laughs> yes. I I was. Are we, are we going? Honestly, that was so. I think that was quite original. So people were saying to me, "This is a post rock band." They're not. They're basically a metal version of Portishead, but I don't know what metal version. That is such strange music. The only thing I would criticise them for, if you're going to introduce a breakdown, don't bring a new metal riff in. Actually, go and go back and listen to your, you know, Machine Head records. No, there's no, sorry. There's there we no, go, Nick Blues no, is coming in. Cage fight, cage fight. <laughs> there's no criticising involved here. It's a good show. The end. And on that note, I'm going to walk up this road and have a lovely time. <laughs> Where'd you live? You Masturbating like furiously the all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Ready to this out. <laughs> yes. um, well, it's up to you, Dave, if you include any of that, but we're uh, outside in the show after oh, after a great set from the band uh, tonight's Tribe headline is Tribe of Ghosts. Now, I wasn't, not, I wasn't sure what to expect. To be honest, I've, I've heard the names. They, were, they headlined a, a show in Cambridge. Um, but, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I mean, the, the vo you've got two very, very talented vocalists there. Uh, I was really impressed with the guys... Um, aggressive vocals in the early part of the set and then I was amazed that he managed to pull out the bag a, a completely different style you know clean yeah. vocals and, and spoken word bits and good I mean great use of uh, samples and, and the backing yeah. tracks as well but Kirk I mean you're, you're the you're the, uh, the guru in all these genres I don't know how to categorise that to holy be fuck I don't even know where to come in on this right okay that is basically like Code Orange and Portishead. There's a big Portishead trip hop influence, but they're playing really aggressive metal music. I know that should not go together. The singer was fantastic. She was like Beth Gibbons from Portishead, but the music was chaotic. But do you know what I really... Punishing was the word I made a note yeah, in the punishing. Yeah, punishing riffs. Do you know what I got from that though? That how 
how much did they enjoy themselves on stage? Oh, well? yeah. The guitar player and the singer. Wow. I, I, honestly, I am. I'm actually bewildered by what I've just seen. And I don't want to exaggerate here. No artist is original, but you got to say they are they are capable of creating an original sound. That oh, is, yeah. that is like a cross between. I don't even know what, what type of metal you would call that. You've got the Portishead said foundations. They're putting really heavy drop tune guitars in there, but it's not your typical gent or prog metal. Either, industrial is it? elements yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. yeah. more industrial in that than there is prog metal. And going back to the vocals, um, young lady up front reminded me very much of Amy. Lee. Um, in yeah. the sort of middle part of the set when she's like kneeling down yes. I thought you close your eyes that's, that's Amy Lee of uh, FNS, Evanescence but, I mean, yeah what a, what a great night someone said that they were like a post-hardcore post-rock band but none of those two things we have to see what their bio says but they're I mean, definitely I've, not I've, a post-hardcore band I haven't checked them out at all post-hardcore bands don't play down tune guitars like that. that there is some real groove to that but my God, you didn't know what was going to happen at any song. It was so unpredictable. Yeah. We actually, actually, for our viewers, we need to summarise what this sounds like. Okay, so we're going to go back to Portishead, but defiled by a really strange groove metal, down-tuned, quite jagged, with hardcore elements. The drummer was sensational in this band, wasn't he? My God, he wasn't just landing the one on every 4-4 four, four beat. I don't know what he was doing at times. The bass player was a bit introverted on stage. He had his headphones in and he was just going away. He never looked at the audience once. I'm not going to criticise him for that. Yeah. How, but how good is the vocalist, the singer, that female yeah. vocalist? Very much like Beth Gibbons. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I don't know what to say about this band. I just want to fucking listen to them. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing them again if they, if they play local and, and check out their online material put it sure they got yeah. some stuff out there put it this way if i was an a and r scout from nuclear blast or century media tonight on napalm records i'd be having a conversation with this band yeah. they are onto something new yeah we are not doing it justice but you're going to see a live version of them you make your minds up yeah. this to me blew me away I, i've never seen anything like it awesome all right mate we'll say goodbye from uh, club 85 Dave's done a great job, I'm sure, recording all the sets. He'll put together uh, a series of uh, videos we got, you know, from what he's captured tonight, and uh, we'll say goodbye. Thank you.